Let's talk about NAS. No age statement whiskey has been with us for quite a few years now. It's pretty much normalised at this point. And in the early days, I think a lot of distilleries were trying to convince us that actually the age, the number of years in the cask, isn't the be-all and end-all, and that a whisky can be great just based on the distillate, and especially a cask or a cask finish. Many whiskies would take a young whisky, maybe three, five, seven years old, mark it as almost an entry-level NAS expression, stick it in perhaps a red wine cask, bottle it with a substandard presentation, slap some corny story on it, and charge a premium for it. Many distilleries are doing that. Many distilleries are getting away with it. But Le Chig haven't done that. This stuff here, Le Chig, Rioja, 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 cask, however you want to say it, in the Sinclair series, this stuff is £9 cheaper than the standard 10-year-old, and in my opinion, that's exactly right. Also, at £33 for a full bottle of this stuff, it doesn't have to aim very high to be worth the money, so I think that this NAS Cask Finished Le Chig is very sensibly priced. So details for this one, as with almost all Distel products, it's bottled at an ABV of 46.3%. We know that this whiskey is matured in bourbon casks, and it's then finished in those Spanish Rioja red wine casks. It does guarantee non-chill -fil non filtration. I'm not sure if it's, it is on the back of the box. And it's also on the bottle, non-chill filtered in red there. Pretty standard presentation from Le Chig. Their normal bottle shape, clear glass. Label is small and to the point it's got most of the information on there. One thing that it hasn't got is a guarantee that this is natural colour. And in my opinion, I think if you get a recent bottle of this, a recent batch, then it probably is. If you get an older one that's been on the shelf somewhere for quite a while, then it potentially isn't. And obviously with that very dark red tint, it's hard to tell either way. But I'm sure that a lot of you will know that Le Chig, Tobermory, the distillery that makes Le Chig peated whiskey, they previously did used to colour their whiskey when I did the tour back in 2018 I asked them because they were going on about chill filtration and they said that they did colour their whiskey but only a small amount and you can't taste it which that kind of statement is really enough to make you cry but since then Tobermory have had a bit of a change of heart there and they've now started to release their newer bottlings as non-chill filtered and natural colour but that really does highlight the problem that I've always gone on about. It's not good enough that distilleries produce natural colour and non-chill filtered whiskey. We need the details on the label. Because otherwise, and this is the exact situation I'm talking about, without getting a bottle code off this and going to, well, phoning up Tobermory Distillery, there's no way that I can find out if this is natural colour or not. So yeah, it does need to be on the label, and hopefully it is with later batches, because we need that guarantee. Also, talking about the other elephant in the room here, the fact that this is part of the Sinclair series. The Sinclair series is named after the distillery's founder, and the fact that this is number one in the Sinclair series makes me think that there either will be or was intended to be more releases in this Sinclair series, which I would guess are probably going to be more cask finished, expressions but this stuff has been around for quite a while now and we still haven't seen a number two in the Sinclair series but based on how much I enjoy this one I really hope there will be. If any of you don't know where the Le Chig brand comes from Le Chig is a, it used to be the name for the Tobermory distillery and Le Chig or Le Chig or however you want to pronounce it is the name of the piece of land that the distillery is built on. It's that piece of land that John Sinclair bought to found his distillery and these days, if you visit the distillery on the Isle of Mull, it's mostly taken up by the car park. So, yeah, a whiskey named after a car park. Let's get some in the glass and see what it's like. Very nice box. Nice presentation all round. I like the bottles that Tobermory and Le Chig use. I am not a fan of Tobermory's unpeated whiskey, but I like pretty much all of the Le Chig peated stuff. A 
big 1798 on the glass there, founding year of Tobermory Distillery. So colour of that one, obviously being finished in what is obviously a very fresh Spanish Rioja cask, it's picked up quite a lot of that sort of vibrant red tint. So Le Chig Sinclair series Rioja cask finish on the nose. As you'd expect, very sweet, very sweet and jammy, grape lead, fruity, getting strong notes of strawberry jam and like a dirty, earthy, sugary, peated strawberry jam, if such a thing to exist. Very sugary, earthy, smoky peat. A little bit of a slightly sulfury gunpowder fireworks note on the nose. Also quite creamy and lactic, which is something that I quite often get in Tobamori and Le Chig whiskies, and it's something that I really like. Also quite malty and starchy, which possibly betrays a little bit of the youth in this one. I think that this is a young whiskey, but it's a very well made and very rich whiskey. Let's see how it tastes. It's really a case of as above, so below with this whiskey. The palate really follows on through from all of the flavours that we got on the nose. Lots of earthy, smoky peat, red fruits, strawberry jam, full bodied red wine on the palate. More of that lactic, creamy funkiness, slightly savoury and slightly cheesy. And I think that's coming through from the red wine cask as well as the base distillate. As for the finish on this one, I'm gonna go medium long and it's all about those sweet and savory notes. Jammy, strawberry jam confectionery notes, cheesy, dry, earthy smokiness. I think that the finish on this one is probably a little bit weaker and a little bit shorter than you get on the standard 10 year old from Le Chig, but very, very pleasant. So I am admittedly late to the party on this one. This whiskey from Le Chig has been around for a very long time, quite a few years now, I think, and I've really done my best to avoid it. And that's mainly because it has that red wine finish. I'm generally not a fan of finished whiskies in general. I think that the flavors that you get from a finish, they quite often sit on top of the flavors that should be, or that would have been there from the cask and the spirit. And they tend to cover up and hide a lot of what was there. And in particular, red wine finishes, I am usually really not a fan of. But with this one and the Highland Park Dragon Tattoo, my opinion on Rioja casks and finishes is starting to change a little bit. And I do think that that's not a coincidence. I think that with both this Le Chig being a heavily peated island malt, and the peat coming through from Highland Park. And I think that the kind of peat that we're getting from Highland Park in a lot of their modern releases is a more robust, stronger, more overbearing peat than we got in the past. I think that it's absolutely not a coincidence that this red wine finish on this one in the Highland Park works well with those whiskies because you've got that strong peaty spirit to stand up to that red wine. I think that if they tried a red wine finish on the Tobermory unpeated whiskey, I don't think that I would like that anywhere near as much as this. But with this whiskey, I think it works really, really well. Speaking of that Highland Park Dragon Tattoo, which was partially finished in Rioja red wine casks, I think that the Highland Park is better than this whiskey. But you kind of have to expect that because the Highland Park Twisted Tattoo is over twice the price of this whiskey and it's also a lot older. But I really think that a large part of why I do prefer the Highland Park Twister Tattoo is all down to the age. And as we all know these days, to get an old, very well matured, older whiskey, you have to pay the price for it. But in defense of this stuff, it's really not that far behind. And I think in terms of value for money, this one probably beats it. As for an age for this whiskey, because we don't know, there's no age statement guaranteed on the label. But I don't think that it's that young. I think that with those starchy, cereally notes that I got on the palate for this one, I do think that there are signs that this is younger than the 10-year-old. And obviously being 
an NAS, no age statement whiskey. They've got no incentive to keep it the same age or anything like that. They can release one batch which is 10 years old and then one that's 18 and one that's three. But I would guess that this one is perhaps seven or eight years old. I think the main thing that you lose with this whiskey compared to the 10 year old is the complexity. And I think that's a combination of the slightly younger age and the fact that it's a finished whiskey. But I think that this is a very justified cask experiment and it's a really enjoyable variation of a whiskey that I really love. And more than that, it's cheaper, it's exactly at the right price. I actually think that this is probably the best value for money Le Chig that I've ever had with the exception of the standard 10 and 18 year old. I think that this stuff is outstanding value and it's just really great fun. Highly, highly recommended. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this one if you've had it and what's your favourite Le Chig. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.